So here's today's harvest. I'm not sure how much these weigh, but we have more than enough beans here. And we still have plenty to harvest within a week or so. Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to 75 South Gardening. In today's video, I'll be showing you step by step how you can grow your own bush beans. So what I'm doing right now is just loosening up the compost. I'm simply going to drop the beans right over the compost and then cover them up. And I'm going to add two rows into each side. These are the Cherokee Wax. I'm not worried about spacing because these will be thin later. So I'm just going to drop them about an inch apart, all the way down. I'll be doing the same thing for these. So that's the first two steps. Step one is to actually find a bean that suits your taste and grows best in your area. Step two is to go ahead and direct sow it into the compost. And once you have a direct sown, all you want to do is just cover them up. Just like that. Once you cover them up, water them in, and wait for them to germinate. And it should take anywhere from three to seven days for these to germinate. And if you have to, just push them down into the soil a bit. You want to make sure you cover that bean up. And what I might do is add another layer of compost over this. That way they have more space to grow roots. So those are the first two steps. You picked your beans, you've germinated your beans. Now we have to wait until they grow. Now that I have it directly sown and watered in, all I have to do is wait for these to pop up. Now this is on the side of the house, up against the wall in the shade. I like to start my new seedlings in a shaded area when it's warm outside. That way the sunlight doesn't kill the new seedling. So within a week, I should have a tray full of beans here. Now what you don't want to do is get them mixed up. So I'm going to go ahead and add my labels and wait for these to come up. Alright y'all, it's been 10 days since I planted my bush beans and I now have 20 new seedlings. Now these are all ready to transplant into the garden. They have their second set of leaves and now I don't have to worry about the slugs and snails damaging them because when they first come up, they come up like that. They have that one leaf and the slugs and snails get to it and they chew it all the way down to here. Then I have to start over again. So that's the reason I started them into the tray. Now in early spring, you can start these into your raised beds but you want to make sure you put something down for slugs at least. Well, the first thing that I'll be doing is thinning out my bush bean plants. Now the soil is pretty dry so they should come apart without any problem. Now when I plant them I'll also be planting them six inches apart. Now that I have my plants stand out, I can go ahead and transplant them into the raised bed you see here. Now this particular bed is nine feet, and I'll be planting these six inches apart in each row. So each row will have 18 plants. And in between each row, I'll have 12 inches of spacing. Now when planting with bush beans, you want to plant them at least four to six inches in between each plant and 12 to 20 inches in between each row. 
And another thing I want to point out is when you plant these, you can plant these to about here. That way when the wind blows, they don't just fall over. And it's just as simple as that, folks. And as far as fertilizer go, the only thing that I have in this raised bed here is the white substance that you see, and that's just bone meal. Now, even though beans create their own nitrogen, a little extra fertilizer won't hurt the plant. If you're gonna use fertilizer, I recommend an all-purpose. All right, so I have all of them transplanted six inches apart in between each plant and 12 inches apart in between each row. But I'm about 33 plants short of filling this bed up. So what I did was I went ahead and planted more right here in the 20 pound grow bags. And I have about 30 in each bag so today I'll be thinning these out and filling up that bed. And I'll also leave about six per grow bag. So it's been exactly five days since I've transplanted these. And just look at the difference in growth. Now we've also had rain for the past three days. So what I'll be doing is giving you guys an update once a week until these things start to flower so it has been one week since the last clip and I am down to about 50 plants a few of them didn't make it because of the Sun but I still have more than enough to have a good harvest so next week what I'm gonna do is go ahead and Florida weave these that way it will be easier for me to harvest and I can just look straight down the rows here. Now you don't have to support these with any type of sticks or trellis. These will grow together and wrap around like vines and hold themselves up. Today makes week two. This is two weeks of growth. I'm on the fourth and fifth set of leaves right now. And some of them are even producing flowers. So I'm down to about 50 plants. But I still have more than enough for a good harvest. Now the yellow beans over here are growing pretty much like pole beans. So what I'm going to have to do now is add some type of trellis. And what I'll be doing is using my PVC pipe and doing the Florida weaving method. So I got it rigged up for my Florida weaving. I have my PVC installed. And I also have a stake in the middle at each end. And these will be for the Florida weaving. So the way I'll be doing it is simply using the drill bit to start a hole then I'll put the screw into the hole, and this is what I'll tie my cotton twine to for each row. So I got my twine installed. And as they grow taller, I'll just add them to the twine. Some of them are still short. But this way, they can wrap around the twine 
and the beans will just hang down. So I'll be updating you guys in a week. Okay, so today makes three weeks since I've planted these. They are now starting to flower and pretty soon this bed will be full of beans. So I'll be updating you guys in a week and I'll show you when to harvest and how to harvest. All right, y'all, so this is a two week update. It's been raining on and off for the past week and I haven't had a chance to get out here and update the video. Now there's also plenty of beans that need to be harvested. So what I'll be doing is demonstrating how and when to harvest your bush beans. Once your beans start to grow from the flower, they should look something like the small one that you see here. Now within a day or two, they should be this size. So now what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to harvest and when to harvest. Now you want to always make sure that you're cutting here. You never want to pull on this because if you do and you pull it the wrong way, you could break the whole stem. And as you can see, there's more flowers growing out of this stem. Each time you cut here, it's going to grow a new stem out of the nose. Now when it comes to harvesting my beans, I prefer to harvest them at this stage, right before they swell all the way up. This way they're a little more tender and they also have a sweeter taste. Now you can let them grow until they fully mature, but once you see the shape of the bean, you want to make sure that you harvest it, because if you don't, it could become like the ones you see over here. Now this is one of my stringless green beans, and as you can see, it is yellow. Now, nine times out of ten, this one is bitter, and this one is sweet. Now I wouldn't go past this stage, so I'll be harvesting these today also. Now another way to make sure that they're ready to harvest is to simply snap them. If they don't snap like that, they're not ready. So what you're looking at right now is today's harvest. And one thing I want to point out is that each bean will have its own unique shape and size. They won't all be long like the one you see here. Even though it's the same variety, they're all going to have their own unique shape and size. Now if you're going to grow these to dry the beans out, you want to make sure that you're letting them grow until you see the size of the bean inside. If you're going to stir fry these or chop them up, you want to harvest them a little earlier. That way they're more sweet and tender. Now these will also store in the refrigerator for up to three weeks. Now anything over three weeks, they're going to start breaking down and you will notice brown spotting. Now most of these that have the brown spotting, I'll be cracking open and I'll be using them as dried beans. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and get these separated and prepared for long-term storage. Now there's four different varieties. There's two varieties of pole beans. I threw away the packet for that one so I don't remember it, but these are my Kentucky Wonders. And up here, these are the Stringless Green Beans and the Royal Burgundy Bush Bean. Now most of these, I'll be opening up and drying them out. In two weeks, I'll be giving you guys an update and I'll show you what a real harvest looks like. But if you're going to be drying these out, what you want to do is sit them somewhere where they can dry out. 
Now I like to put these underneath my grow light for about a week or two. That way, all of the moisture inside the bean dries out. If you don't do that, what's going to happen is if you store it in a jar and there's still moisture inside that bean, there's a big chance that you might get mildew. All right, y'all, it's been exactly one week. And what I'll be doing today is a little harvesting. Remember, the more that you pick, the more flowers that the plant will produce. Now the stringless green beans are producing slow due to the high temps here in zone 8A. For the last week, we've been over 95 degrees and it's affecting the plants as you can see. If you take a look at the leaves, that is the reason for the white spotting. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do Let's harvest these and water this bed in really good. All right, y'all, let's see what we got here. So far, these are the Cherokee Wax, and I still have the stringless green beans to harvest. And there's more on this side. So I'm gonna get each and every last one that's ready. All right, you guys, so what I'm gonna do right now is demonstrate how I like to prepare my beans for long-term storage. Now this process is called blanching. So what you wanna do first, is bring some water to a bowl and add salt. The next step is to simply cut off the end of each bean. Now what you want to do from here is drop them into the boiling water. Now I'm gonna let these boil for about two minutes, then I'll take them out and we'll go to the next step. Now after two minutes, what you wanna do is go ahead and remove them from the pot. Now you want to use a metal strainer. Don't use a plastic one like the one I got, or you could burn yourself. I'm only using this because the handle is broken on my metal one. So what you want to do is put those in the ice and let them chill off for a few minutes. And from here, you can chop them up and store them in the freezer. Now that my beans have cooled off, I can go ahead and cut them up and put them in my freezer bag. Now the reason for blanching is so that over a long period of time, your beans still have that fresh flavor. They'll also be nice and green. Now, if you don't blanch them, they can lose flavor over time. And they might end up like the ones you see here. Dark green, shriveled, and most likely they will become mushy once thawed out. And what happens when you boil it for two minutes is it kills off the bacteria and the enzymes inside of the beans that cause them to break down over time. So if you want them to last longer, you want to go ahead and blanch them before long-term storage. If not, you're going to risk taste, texture, and color. Now you can freeze them without blanching if you're going to use them within a month or two. But anything over a few months, you're going to risk losing taste, texture and color and that's pretty much it you guys always remember to plan your garden with your health in mind